Morning, Ms. O'Brien. There's a yellow button in front of you. If that's lit up, your microphone is on, and you have five minutes to make a deputation in the committee, and then you can be asked questions by councillors. Thank you, Chair and councillors, for seeing us today. Uh, my name is Trish O'Brien. Uh, I work. I'm a heavy duty cleaner with police facilities. Uh, my name is Christopher Idrovo. I am also a heavy duty cleaner for police facilities. I would like to let, I'm here today because I'd like to let, let everyone know kind of what we do in police facilities because I don't think the public nor some of the counselors are aware of what we do. I'm a heavy duty cleaner. Um, I clean the cells at 51. I clean HIV blood off the walls. I clean feces off walls. I clean man stuff off walls on a regular basis. When it comes to security, it's like for my own security, health issues, do I believe I deserve benefits? Do I believe I get paid a fair wage? Yeah, I do for what I clean. I clean bed bugs. I clean scabies. You going to get somebody to do that for 10 25 an hour? Christopher has cleaned other stuff as well. Go ahead, Chris. Uh, also from personal experience cleaning cells, uh, I also experienced one day a couple, couple weeks back where an individual, an inmate, uh, had come in, and I was forewarned of actually looking into the cell because the cell was uh, full of blood. Um, it was completely full of blood and apparently the inmate uh, was peeling his face off and rubbing it all over the walls, all over the toilets, the sinks, and all over the floor. Um, I had to also go and clean that, but at the same time the paramedics had shown up and checked him, took him to the hospital, and a few hours later brought him back um, they escorted him to another cell. Uh, he also did the same thing he did uh, a couple of hours before and had to also clean that up as well um, from personal experience. This is a regular occurrence in police facilities, cleaning up stuff like this, people that have HIV, that cut their wrists, paint the walls. Like I don't know if you think 1025 is a fair wage for that. A benefits package is a fair wage for that for my own safety. I mean, what if I caught something? You think I'm not entitled to benefits? I think I am. We also are trained in infectious diseases, which we, are, like, we deal with on a constant basis in holding rooms, um, in cells. So having the proper training, are you, I, I'm not sure that everybody has the proper training, but I'm sure that, you know what, you know, we all get it. All city workers get it that work in police facilities. We all have clearance. We all have... Um, you talked about the security issue. Well, you know what? We have access to places, the cleaners, that other officers don't have access to, like the superintendent's office, the inspector's office, the complaint coordinator's office that deals with complaints. Yeah, we do have access. We've built that relationship with them, that trust. Is it important? I think it's important. Everybody has a working relationship with their supervisors, right? We are trusted employees of the city. Also to point on that as well, um, my work week is a Saturday to Wednesday work week as opposed to a Monday to Friday, um, pointing on the security issue as well. Um, I do work the weekends. Uh, no one is in their offices at the moment. Um, they give me the responsibility of doing that and entrust me as well. Uh, with the police constables as well, we are known with them on a first name basis. They trust us and we're a familiar face to them as well on a day to day basis. We have other workers that work in police facilities with us. Some of them have given the City of Toronto 20 to 30 years of their life, have never known anything different, and you're looking just to contract out their jobs. We have single moms, we have everything, and you're just looking to let that go. And I don't think it's right. Uh, also, from uh, my point of view, uh, from my personal life, um, I, I, I was looking for work for, for a while. Uh, I was laid off from my pre previous job where I worked... Uh, in uh, human resources and business administration. Uh, when I went looking for work, um, I couldn't find any, so I resorted to uh, looking for work online uh, within the city of Toronto. The first available job that was available was a heavy duty cleaner for police facilities. I took it. Uh, I thought it was a fair wage that they were offering us, and it, it's a way of life for myself to provide for my family, for my wife, and also for my two-year-old son uh, on a regular day-to-day -day basis as well. I think this affects everybody. Like, if you don't know what we do, you can't judge. You can come in any day of the week and we'll show you. Like, there is blood. Like, people do things, like, unimaginable things that we clean. And you tell me, 10, 25 an hour, 
that that's a fair wage for that? I don't think so. I don't think you'll get a company to clean it for that. There's no way. Also, pointing out to what she's saying, uh, a regular occurrence is as well, like she said, to, to wrap up what we're saying is we got to deal with urine, uh, feces, vomit, uh, blood, HIV, uh, scabies, bed bugs on, on a regular basis. And, RTB. and tuberculosis as well. Um, we just wanted to point out and just give you a better example of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis as opposed to what most people think that we just go in and we clean. We, we do that as well, but we also do what we just mentioned as well. So that's just to give you a better example of what we do. Thank you. Thank you. Questions from outside councillors? Council Lake. Thank you very much, both of you, for being here today. I think it, it, it brings us a sense of perspective about actually what we're talking about here and puts a face to uh, and, 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 a, and a life situation to the gravy that's often talked about. Do you think or do you feel respected for the work that you do uh, and the taxes that you pay uh, when you come to a chamber like this and we're discussing very, very uh, casually that your benefits are gravy? Well, it's disheartening because I, I don't think anybody understands what we do. Like they say, some some things are visual to City of Toronto, like that the City of Toronto does, and other things you don't see what we do. No one comes in, like and sees like in a police station or sees cells or sees what we clean. So, like some of you may not know that that's what we do, right? Yeah, it's a little disheartening knowing that you want to contract that out and thinking that 1025 is a fair wage for that job. That's probably going to answer my next question, that if you th do you think categorizing your benefits as gravy is fair? My benefits? Are you telling me that when someone splits their wrist, paints the cell in blood, they have HIV, that when I go in there, even though I'm suited up and I'm cleaning this, if I happen to hit something or the suit breaks and I catch something, that I'm not entitled to a benefit to properly take care of myself? Mm -hmm. I think that you do. Um, would you be able to provi provide, you, you talk about providing for your family, this is your, 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 uh, your, your livelihood. Yes. Would you be able to provide for your family on the minimum wage salary that's uh, You know what, I, I don't think I possibly could. Well, what do you think you'd have to do to, to make sure that you could make ends meet? Uh, you know what, I'd probably have to work uh, maybe two to three jobs. Work morning shift, afternoon shift, maybe even night shift, as opposed to what I'm doing now and, and earning a, a fair wage. I do truly believe that. Well, thank you very much for all the hard work you do for our city. No, you're welcome. Thank you. Councillor Davis. So at 10.25 an hour, it's about $18,000 a year. Um, if you were faced with going from, I think it's around 40000 or just less than 40000 you're being paid to 18000 a year. Um, could you survive on that? I don't think so. Look at the cost of living. Like, could you support, could you survive on eighteen thousand? Could you cut your salary in half and live? Not minimum wage. With no benefits. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask was the um, the issue of a pension. Um, I presume you're like all of us that you'd like to be able to. Um, live beyond your work years with some access to income and, and a pension. Do you think that uh, that's fair? Yeah, I do think that's fair. I think that every, everybody's entitled to that. Mm -hmm. um, the security guards here at the city, um, many of them are here from contracted agencies. Are you aware that when the bid goes out and if the company that bids on it comes in with a lower bid than the previous contract, um, the folks just come in the next day wearing a different uniform and getting paid less money to do exactly the same work? It's funny because what we do, I don't, like, do they have the proper training? Are they trained in infectious diseases? Like, somebody that's been arrested and comes into my job, when they go into a cell that's clean, they, if a contractor doesn't clean it properly, so they go in, they shouldn't come out with something because it wasn't cleaned properly. Are they going to have the proper training that we have? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the work you do. 
Thank you, Councillor Davis. Uh, questions of councillors on the committee? Seeing none, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, at this point, we've 